Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey and I am here today to bring you a new series that I've kind of been working on. I'm really excited about to share it with you guys. I hope you guys like it and it can be like a regular thing. So today I am going to be doing music and the making. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and be looking into an artist, but more so looking into a song and talking about the meaning behind that song. A lot of times, we as people nowadays, we just respond to vibes and energy, which is awesome, but sometimes it's really important for us to take a moment to understand what it is that we are consuming. So without further ado, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into it. Today, we are going to be talking about Marvin Gaye sexual healing. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna take a micro dive into a little bit of information about the artist himself and some of the things that would be important to know just in case some of you guys haven't heard of Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was born April 2nd, 1939. He was an American singer-songwriter who helped to shape the sound of Motown Records in the 1960s. His talent and success earned him the nickname Prince of Motown and Prince of Soul. After leaving Motown Records in 1978, Marvin Gaye began to work on his first post-Motown album, titled Midnight Love. The first track on the album was called Sexual Healing. It was released in September of 1982 and became the biggest hit of Marvin Gaye's career spending a record-breaking 10 weeks at number one on the Hot Black Singles chart, becoming the biggest R&B hit of the 1980s. Marvin Gaye won his first two Grammy Awards and was quoted saying, I don't make records for pleasure. I did when I was a young artist, but I don't today. I record so that I can feed the people what they need, what they feel. Hopefully, I record so that I can help someone overcome a bad time. At this point in the video, if you have not heard the song, I would totally pause this and just go and listen to it. Uh, but come back, come back, okay? We have more to say and we have more to talk about. I can't tell you what to, you're gonna do whatever you wanna do, so if you wanna stay, stay. Um, but because music can be interpreted in many different directions in many different ways, I actually got a couple of my friends to go ahead and listen to the song and give their opinions of what they think the song is about. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut to them and they're going to give us their opinions on what this song is about. Check it out. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to have you listen to this song by Marvin Gaye, Sexual Healing, and you're going to tell us what you think the artist was thinking when he wrote it, as well as your own personal opinions on it. All right. So after listening to the song, what do you think that the artist was trying to portray in the song? Uh, he needs someone to be there for him, to, I guess, lift him up, to make him feel good, um, to be his comfort. So sexual healing goes beyond just the physical. Um, it's a thing of the mental, physical, and maybe even the spiritual. Okay, and then what does the song individually mean to you? I don't know, that's a good question. <laughs> what feelings do I get when I hear this song? kind of having that special someone to whenever I need a healing in general, that that person can be there and be that for me, um, whether it is sexual, you know, intimate, touching, or it's just um, someone to listen physically or even mentally. Okay, so what do you think that the artist was trying to portray in that song? I feel like the artist wanted to show us that we should appreciate every day with our loved ones. He wanted to show us that you can be happy no matter what's happening. If you have somebody next to you who is there for you, no matter what happens in your life. I feel like he was dealing with some health issues and some issues in personal plan, but the person who was next to him actually helped him to feel happy, to feel grateful, to love life for what it is and who is there for him. And how does the song make you feel individually? It makes me feel happy. I love my husband and I feel like that I should portray when you love somebody, how they make you feel good, even if you have a bad day, even if you are scared, if you have if problems in your life, but that person who is next to you actually not only comforts you, but actually makes you think about the positive stuff in life and to be grateful about everything that's happening, think about what's good, that somebody's next to you, and appreciate the life for what it is. Good job. Now, can you give us your Instagram handle? Yes, 
annie.ivanova underscore pd. Thank you. Things that are not gonna make it in this video. <laughs> <laughs> this is my personality. This is how your channel sky <laughs> skyrockets. Is you know your very special guests like me. Calm no. down, egotistical <laughs> maniac moment. The drama. Okay. No, but it yeah, because the song he talks about him. It's never. I mean, there's a few times he, he, like, he says us, but when he's talking about her, it's like the things you do, he refers to her as being like a doctor. She operates so well, but it's still about him. It's all about, like, he, you know, he needs this. He's feeling blue. He's feeling sick, which I feel like he's talking more like a mental sick. Um, you know, it's, he feels bad in this sexual healing. This, this love, this sex he has with her brings him out of his blueness his depression okay and what does the song individually mean to you before today before i heard the lyrics i mean before i saw the lyrics written down um i always thought it was kind of a, like a fun song like yeah it's a slow song but the only thing that stood out was sexual healing so there was something like fun about it um almost like let's get it on the other big song mm -hmm. that people know now having read the lyrics it almost takes on kind of a more melancholy kind of thing now so it's always going to be more of a melancholy thing versus the sort of like fun kind of you know like i said sister song to um mm -hmm. let's get it on Sexual Healing was written by Marvin Gaye alongside Odell Brown and David Ritz. David said jokingly after seeing Marvin Gaye's large collection of pornography, you need sexual healing, which soon became the lyrical inspiration and the title of the single. There is much speculation to who contributed what aspects of the lyrics to the song. David Ritz claims to have written a poem for Marvin Gaye to use as inspiration. Uh, but that's largely disputed by Odell Brown, as well as semi-disputed by Marvin Gaye, uh, who he accredits him somewhat, but not completely. This was the first song Marvin Gaye had produced in over three years since his split from Motown. He had spent three years prior to his comeback in Europe. Some individuals speculate he was hiding from both his financial woes, as well as his second deteriorating marriage from Janice Gaye who had filed for divorce in 1981 after only four years of marriage, uh, citing abuse and Marvin also inciting uh, infidelity on her part. There were many other issues related to their relationship and I believe he was actually still in the process of getting divorced from his first wife, Anna Gordy, as well. Aside from the historic element of the way the song was written being about Marvin Gaye's addiction to uh, pornography and whatnot, we also have just the undertone for this entire song. He was going through such a difficult time, and I think a lot of people's perspective of this song is more about love, but it is really a lot about him and a lot about pain and what he is currently dealing with. And you can also cite that he has quite a few sexual demons and issues with women. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna play a couple of interviews and a couple of scenes from certain clips, and maybe you'll understand a little bit more what I am referring to. That's what I, how do you feel about love? I don't know, love is misery. <laughs> love is miserable. I think I'll be a bachelor and I'll swing and um, I won't fall in love, I'll just, be loveful, be kind and good, and um, have fun. I don't feel like being miserable. Marriage. Miserable. <laughs> um, I'll never marry again until I know I'm ready and that I have the right lady and the right consciousness and a good girl, girl who don't fool around too much and all that stuff, you know? Sex. Sex, oh, God. Sex. Sex is marvelous. Um, Love is miserable. 
And sex Marriage is, is miserable. And sex is great. <laughs> yeah, that's about right for me right now. No, no, there is quite a separation between the two as far as I'm concerned. I think that sex is really sex and love is love. And if you happen to love the person that you're having sex with, that's tremendous. But um, I really see a complete separation in the two that are totally unrelated to me. You can see how Marvin Gaye is fine with sex and sexual healing but can't seem to maintain a positive relationship with the female beyond his mother who is referenced a ton in the documentary about Marvin Gaye that I totally encourage you to check out I'm gonna link it below um, it has a lot of great information about the rest of his career uh, shortly after this song was written and he made his comeback he would die in 1984 and he would be killed by his father 69 year old marvin gay senior was taken to police headquarters in downtown los angeles last night after being booked on suspicion of murder in the death of his son marvin gay was visiting his parents home here in los angeles there was a family argument the singer was shot in the chest a little while later marvin gay died you can really see that he was in a lot of pain when he wrote this and that this was more just a nod to the fact that he was acknowledging that he needed healing and he was seeking it through sexuality. And I think this is very interesting, especially for this day and age and this time, because we are very much free sexuality and have sex and be empowered by it. But sometimes the mentality can be very destructive in and of itself. Marvin Gaye was also heavily addicted to cocaine and you can kind of see in his interviews the way that he talks being very rash and sporadic. I've never been quite so depressed. I'm a bit of a manic depressant anyway. Most of the time I put on quite a face. What do I feel I'm here for? My purpose? And I'm a little reluctant sometimes to get on with it. I'm afraid I'm much too emotional uh, to be an artist really. Um, to be a really good one. I'm afraid if I ever fell in love again and I met the wrong woman, I don't imagine I'll live. I'm a very fragile heart. I couldn't bear the, um, the thought of the rejection. My ego is much too, too, um, <laughs> too heavy or whatever I would say, too big, too, too wild, too whatever, to, um, to accept rejection. And uh, I was rejected, and um, I had to learn the lessons of rejection, and uh, it's done a great deal to um, heal my ego and to uh, make me uh, realize that I am probably not the um, king of the earth, as I've always uh, felt I was. Is that what you're... I'm now a prince. <laughs> Marvin Gaye had an amazing career, so I do really advise you to check out the entire documentary, but I believe that this song is definitely a lot more rooted in pain than it is in love. It's a lot more rooted in not understanding how to love without sex and how to get to that place beyond sexual intercourse. I think Marvin Gaye just wanted somebody to love him, but he wasn't able to have the time to put in the work to be somebody that could be loved by others beyond his artwork. He talks a lot about himself as an artist and I feel that he only knew how to be loved as an artist. Prior to listening to the song with this mind frame, I also would have told you before that this song was about love and sexuality. Uh, for me personally, it still does hold that meaning that you are going to love somebody um, through sexuality, through sex. You are going to not only f them, you're going to not only have sex with them, but you are going to love them. You are going to express the feeling of love and that your love goes beyond sexual intercourse. Your love is an intertwining of spirits. I think that that is really where the song always lands for me, that sexual healing is a real thing, that you can be loved through sex, that sex isn't meant to just be smash and pass all the time. I mean, it happens. We do. It. Things happen. Life happens. But I think ideally it is just a really great showcase of love and sexuality at its finest. And that is what I personally heard in the song prior to listening to it with a deeper ear and I want to challenge everybody to listen to music like that though because artists 
not only want you to derive your own meaning from their music, but I believe they truly want you to understand and feel where they came from and the places they are in their lives. It's the only way that they're able to express how they're feeling. And that's how I feel as an artist. I have no skills. Uh, no, I am a dance teacher at Pole Fit Carolinas, and I have been a dance teacher teacher slash dancer for a long time and when I create choreography I really put my soul into it and it's wonderful to watch people derive their own meaning from choreography but it's also wonderful when people want to understand your creative genius or inspiration or whatever you want to call it but as a culture we're very quick to just move on and not totally investigate these things so I want to challenge everybody today to kind of take a moment and really pay attention to the things that you're consuming daily um that is what I have for you guys today so I hope that you really enjoyed this and I do plan to goal is going to be to make this a bi-weekly series but we're going to say it could be a monthly series and maybe if it goes really well and we do really well and we like it and people like comment subscribe you know then we could turn it into a weekly series but until then I love you guys and I'll see you next time bye